Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. You're watching Indigo Tech Tutorials. If you're new here, please smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. In yesterday's video, I showed you how to create an app like Airbnb, where you could put up listings for different houses. And I just set up the basic structure of the app, right? I didn't really get into like the booking process or anything like that. Well, in this video, I'm going to be adding some improvements to the overall UI and the experience for the users. In this video, I'm gonna build a whole image preview section for our form so that you can preview the images that you're uploading for your listing. And then you can also remove the ones that you didn't mean to upload. This is gonna be really exciting. We're gonna dive into the different libraries that are added into Rails, like Active Storage, Direct Upload, and show you how you can use those in your app to build a better experience for your users. So hope you guys are excited. Let's get right into the video. We were building this website and I got it to this point. We have a pretty good preview of the photos and also the rest of the listing. Now, one thing I just noticed is when I resize to go to mobile, it looks like our photo preview feature gets kind of messed up and the images on the right side just get all squished. So I'm gonna go ahead and fix that right now real quick. So to do that, we're gonna go into our app folder views listings and then inside the listing folder it's going to be on the show page that's where we're rendering all that content so we have to come in here and figure out what's going on so we can try to fix this so actually it's right here how we have a div class flex so what we need to do is we need to have flex call on mobile and then we can have a medium breakpoint which changes the flex rail. So it'll switch from being stacked on top of each other to being side by side. And now when we reload, we'll see something like this, which looks a lot nicer. So we just kind of have this view. And then if you do want to show all photos, you could click here. All that page is kind of squished too. We can try to figure that out. So first of all, I think it would be nice if we could take this top image and make it stretch all the way. So that's another thing we could change up here where we have that width 80. We can just do a medium breakpoint for that and it should automatically do width 100. See, so just like this. All right, and I mean, honestly, this looks pretty good to me. I don't know, you might want to squish this down even more and compress it, possibly, but I'm kind of fine with this. Another thing we could do is maybe like grid calls too on medium. But we could do grid calls four on small screen and then we could just make these images kind of like smaller tiles instead of height 36 we do like height 10. if we reload now we have something like that so the images are a bit smaller although they're kind of stretched weirdly so we probably want to do a fixed width with 10 and then medium width auto so it's not going to affect the size when it's larger. See, it just goes back to the normal size, which is good. Uh, these images are still kind of weird, so, oh, let's reduce this gap. Let's make that only on medium. And there's still kind of a lot of space. We could increase these images, maybe height 20. There we go. And that looks like a little bit nicer for a mobile experience. And then we will resize it goes back to the original design all right i think i like that and then also on the photos page we could change this so these images don't look like uh the way that they look like these tiles that are kind of strange so to do that we'll go over to this photos page and then inside of here we're going to add a breakpoint for the grid calls for so that'll only apply on larger than medium screens now we get something that looks like this, which already, I mean, it looks not bad, but I might want to change this width so that that only gets applied on medium. And then maybe do width full, try to stretch it out the full width. There's still like a little bit of offset space. So I want to figure out what's going on there. Maybe I should do width full on this div too. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. It's fine though. <clears throat> it's just a little bit of space. 
Maybe I'll do a background to try to help me figure that out. Okay, I want to try to figure out why there's a tiny bit of space more on the right side. It might have stemmed from this top level div. So let me put some BG green on that. Let's see, okay, so see this div isn't stretching all the way. I guess we just need to give it a width full. Help it out there, and there we go. Now, it, it, was, it was only like a centimeter, but it was kind of bugging me in my mind. like that little bit of offset. All right, so now we got this. Let's delete those greens. Cool, so now we have the like the expanded view of all the photos. And then also we have this little preview, and this is looking pretty good to me. The next thing I want to go and focus on is this image select. I want to make this a lot nicer because right now it doesn't even show that we have any images selected. It just says no file chosen even though we have multiple images. And then also when I'm creating new listings, I want it to be a nicer experience so that when you like add the images, there's a little preview and everything. And then you can delete ones that you didn't mean to add. So let's get started on that. So what we're going to do to add that better file select is we're going to have a little bit of custom JavaScript that attaches to this file field. And then we'll also use active storage and a direct upload library built into active storage. So let's just quickly look that up active storage with direct upload. And you'll find a good example on the uh, Ruby on rails guides.com. They have this whole section on active storage. So to use it, we first need to add the package. So since we use import maps, we're gonna, instead of doing like a yarn add, we're gonna do an import map pin. So let's run that. So let's go to the console and I'll run dot slash bin, import map pin, Rails active storage. All right, just like that, we have active storage. And then now we can go and import it into our application JS. So over here in JavaScript, application JS. I'm just going to import Active Storage and I'm going to start it. The next thing that we can do is add direct upload true to the file field. Now, this is if you want to use the built in file field, like the normal HTML file field, but we could also use a library like Drop Zone, which might allow us to have a more customized UI design. But I'm fine with just using the built in. And I'll just write some custom code to make it look prettier. Cool. So from there, uh, there's really just a few more things. So they have this example right here in JavaScript where they add an event listener. And then they just do all this stuff from here. So I think the point is that direct upload will automatically be working. When you choose a file, like they even have an example right here. So actually, oh, it looks like when you create the document, then it uploads. Hmm. That's kind of interesting. Let's see it again. So they select the files. And then they create it and then it does the whole UI. See, I've done it differently in the past. You can use direct upload class for this purpose upon receiving a file, instantiate a direct upload and call it create method. So I guess there's two ways of doing it. We could just simply add a, like some sort of event listener onto that element. But this is kind of interesting because then it happens after you press the create button. There's no like advanced UI that lets you preview the images or anything. So I think I'm going to use this uh, example to use the class directly. And then we're going to create a custom stimulus controller. So let's go ahead and do that. The first thing I'm going to do is create the stimulus controller. I'm just going to do that in the console because there's a nice command for that. Let's say rail stimulus image upload. That's what I'll call it. 
And then just like that, we can restart the server. I'll come in the code and then add that JavaScript. I think what I'll do is I'll just add it on this top level element. And then I might have like the previews show up right underneath this file field. So to add our CMOS controller, I'm going to type data controller on the div. And then I'm going to set it to image dash upload. And then what I'll do is I'll set the file field for images as a target on this controller. So to do that, I'll add a data attribute and inside of this these brackets. I'm going to say image upload target. And then we could just put in like input or you put file field, whatever you want to call your target. And now I have to go add that into our stimulus. So to find our stimulus, you can just go into the app JavaScript and then the controllers folder. This is added when you create your app, you have all your controllers, you'll store them inside of here. And you'll see with that command, we got this controller generated for us. And it's an image upload controller. So this is already going to have JavaScript on it and we can add some code in the connect which is whenever the controller shows up on the page so just in case you wanted to see that it's working you always have the javascript now since we added it i'm just going to do this message in the connect just so you can see that if i reload we get this hello message from the image upload controller this is really cool. From here, I'm going to add a target and do static targets equals input. So now we have that input target. And then I'm also going to want to add a callback for whenever a file gets selected. So to do that, I'll add action inside of this data brackets. So we're setting data and then we're setting these different data attributes because that's how stimulus works. It goes all through the data attributes. So we have our target and then we also have an action. So for the action, we just do image dash upload file added. Now we're going to call a file added function whenever the file is selected. So all I'll do is I'll come back into here and I'll just rename the connected function to file added and then we're going to get an event in here and I can just console log file added and I'll pass the event so I can look at that in the console. Now when we reload and we go and select an image like this we get this event file added and then inside of here we have the event and we should have a few other things. Although I'm not sure how we can get the file out of this from this event. Event.target. Alright, it's temp one. Oops. But we can, we can just say files and get it back as an array of files. So it actually is that easy. So inside of our code, we can get those files saying let files equals e.target.files. Now we can do files for each file. And then we'll loop over the files. And then inside of here is where we upload them. So we're going to print it out for now, uploading file, file. And let's see how that works. So if we go to select our image. Boom. We actually see files for each is not a function. Hmm. Okay, I think because it's not an array, it's just going to return like some sort of other structure. So we need to say array from the files. And then we can loop over it like that. Now if I come back in here, no, oh, just like that, we get our uploading file message. And then we have this file with all that different information. And if we were to select multiple files, you'll see that we get the event for each file. This is great. Now inside of here is where we would do our direct upload and we start this whole process. So 
what we're going to do is, I guess we'll just copy this class. Because they kind of have this whole uploader class thing. Uh, so first of all, let's import direct upload at the top of our controller. And then, hmm, I guess we can do this uploader class. Although it's kind of a lot of code. I'll just paste it at the bottom after our stimulus controller. Now we have uploader that we can call up here. We can say like, let direct upload equals new uploader. And then we pass in the file and also the URL. So the direct upload URL, we're gonna get this from the input. So actually, if we still have that in the console, so template.target data set, and look at the data set that we have. So we have that image upload target, so that's setting as a target. We also have the action, but the other thing we have is direct upload URL, which is where we have to send these files to upload them to our Rails app. So see, Rails makes a custom, or really the active storage framework makes a custom URL in your app that allows you to upload these files. So we just have to get that URL from this object, which is gonna be direct upload URL. So that's pretty easy, you can just write it out like this. And then now into our uploader, we're gonna pass that direct upload URL. And then, dot upload equals new direct upload oh. Wait, this is weird because why do they have a method called upload and then also a variable called upload I don't get it Let's see what happens now. Let's see if this uploads without changing anything. I'm kind of confused. Looks like nothing happened. If we check in the network, we're not seeing anything getting triggered in the network tab. So I'm not really sure. Your console log here. Creating direct upload. All right, it says that it's creating the direct upload. And we also console log that object that we just created. So we have an uploader. It says the file's undefined. Hmm. We should have had a file. Uploader. And we still get that like file undefined type of thing. I'm kind of confused about this. So do we also have to call upload? I think we might have to. So it's called direct upload dot upload and then pass in the file again. It's kind of weird. All right, so now we get type error, direct upload, upload is not a function. Which is weird, because it looks like it's a function. Hmm. Wow. This direct upload example needs some help because this doesn't make any sense. It's actually kind of confusing. I'm guessing that you mostly use it just for the callbacks. Uh, 
So like, why do we have two? Why do we have like this dot upload and then we actually have a method called upload? And then we're passing in file, but we're not even using the file. It's kind of weird. Hmm, I really want this to work. So we're supposed to be creating this direct upload, setting it as a variable this dot upload, but then we're overriding this function. So I don't understand. Let's try to change the function name, upload file, and then we could call direct upload upload file. Possibly this will work. We're getting cannot read properties of undefined reading size on file checksum. So I don't know, is it just like the type of file that we're adding doesn't have a size attribute? I'm gonna try to look this up. Yeah, I don't know. See, I'm wondering if it's because usually I've done direct upload with something like drop zone. I don't know if you have to process the file and do something to it. Although there is an attribute size, so why is it saying to not read properties of it? That's weird. I'll check some. See, this size, we do have size on the file. Well, let's store this and just call it about size. We do have it. So I'm really not sure what's happening. Oh, one thing, isn't it expecting a blob? Or that's what we're going to get back from it. Hmm. Yeah, this code's so weird. Also, why is it passing this dot file when we should just be passing file, right? And this dot URL again. I'm kind of confused by that. Right, like wouldn't we have to set this dot file equals file dot URL equals URL for this part to work? So I don't know why they left that out. All right, I don't see anything happening, but I think maybe if we call, we are calling upload file. That's strange. Let's check network. Oh, we actually did get a request to direct uploads. Interesting. Do this again. Oh yeah, look at that. We're actually making the request now. I guess that was what was missing. I don't know why they don't tell you that in the example. This code is just wrong. This code is completely wrong. First of all, like there's so many things. So I guess I should try to make a contribution right now. But yeah, so I'm really excited to get to the part that I want to see, which is like the previews for the images. So let's get started on that. So first of all, a cool part of this is doing the direct upload progress. So this part is pretty exciting we can do add the events <clears throat> direct upload did progress events so we can actually console log this and we should be able to see how our progress is coming through when we're uploading an image so see it's actually working we got this progress event 
which since we're on local, it only did one of them because it's just like instantly. There's no latency since we're on the local computer. But we'll see how this will affect other things. So like when we call this upload function, we're uploading right here. And then down here at the end, we actually have like our uploaded file. We say file was uploaded and we have this blob with a blob signed ID. See, just like that, we get this event file was uploaded. And then we have all of this information about the file. As long as, and as well as the file itself, which is right here, because we're passing it in. So if we wanted to say, like, display it right here on the page, we could do that too. So what I usually do is I do it from the back end, because we do have the file. So we could say like console log file, and we might be able to make something happen. Okay, so actually I've done this before, and I guess you can do this. Although set the source, that's not what I was saying. How to display an image from a file input. See, I have done this before. Right, and it involves a reader. So you have to say like file reader, and then you read as data URL. And you have a reader on load. So this is essentially the bulk of the code right here. And then inside of here, inside of the onload function, is where we'd actually append it. So instead of document body, let's do uh, the controller, which we don't have set. So let's add that as another argument inside of our constructor. We pass controller, and we can set with that controller equals controller. And then up here, when we're initializing it, we'll just pass in this as the last option. So now we have a direct link to our stimulus controller. So down here inside of the onload function, also let's remove the function keyword because when we have a function keyword, we're no longer allowed to use this to access things off the class. We're gonna switch it to arrow syntax. And then now we can use this. So down here when we're doing document body, instead of that, we'll say this dot controller element we're gonna append the child on that and let's just see what this looks like although it's not gonna be anything crazy but we're able to display these images just like that which actually that's pretty cool we just need to work on the UI design but since we have this image element that we're creating and we could actually do like a advanced JavaScript start adding styling here or we could do something like a like a preset inside of the HTML that we copy. That's another option. Like imagine we had a template. Templates like a way that you can usually do things like this. So inside of a template, none of this code gets displayed on the page, but we can use it to like have some sort of like an image tag. That's not going anything to anywhere, but we can set some classes on it. Width 10, height 10, object cover. And then inside of our image upload JS, we could access this image tag. So let me set it as a target on our image upload controller. So we do that by saying image upload target. And then we'll do a template image. So we have this one image tag, and then inside of our image upload controller, we'll add that as target. Then what we'll do is for our image, instead of being this image, we're going to say it's going to be this controller dot template image target, and then we're going to somehow need to like clone it. <laughs> Let me look that up real quick. Clone, oh, I guess it's pretty easy, clone node. Cool. 
far. I'm also not going to use far because that's pretty outdated at this point. Let's use, if we're not going to change it, let's do const. So if we're not going to ever redefine the variable, which we're not redefining it, we're just changing an attribute on it. So that's fine. Now let's take a look at what this will look like. We go upload an image. We totally get missing target element template image. Huh. So that's not right. I think maybe because we're inside of a template and it's not displaying, we can't actually use that as a target. So we might have to use the template element itself as the target. We can add our data image upload target attribute on the template. I'll still say image preview. But instead of doing a clone node, we actually have to do almost like an inner HTML or to get the actual, I might have to say children zero to get like the first child. I don't know. Let's experiment. We still get miss missing target element template image. Oh, template image. I was calling it image preview. Okay, I guess that wasn't the problem. <laughs> but actually, no, it wasn't working here. And we changed it, but then I changed the name. Because I kind of forgot or something. So we called it template image. Let's just call it template for good. Uh, templates, just so we don't get confused. And since that's actually a template element, where it's, it's not the image itself. And then just make sure to update in the other spots to the correct code. So now we're saying we're going to get our template target. We're going to try to get the children off of that. Let's see what that does. It says cannot set properties of undefined. So I guess it wasn't able to find the children. But let me count the log this. children yeah it doesn't it's not able to find that so I guess template template element works kind of differently than I expected it's mostly for getting the inner HTML so if we were just to do like inner HTML we would probably see our image so yeah we have this like children image so I guess what we can do is let's have some sort of string inside of source that will replace so we can do that by inside of the image tag we could say like template image like this and inside of our JavaScript we'll just say like comp preview equals template target in our HTML and then almost like replacing that replace template image with oh well, I don't even know what was it <laughs> e target result oh right right here and then instead of append child it almost needs to be like append inner HTML <laughs> you can do that by doing plus equal this is getting kind of crazy. Oh, look, the asset template image is not present. Whoops. So I guess we can't use image tag then. This image tag is going to throw that error. This is already kind of getting out of hand. All right, forget it. Forget the template. Maybe the template was a bad idea. We can delete template because as you saw before, it was working. Uh, let's just forget. Let's forget about the whole template code, right? Let's go back to just creating the image. This was very simple. All right, it creates the image. Just like that, we have a working display, although the images just aren't kind of like the size or the styling that we want. But actually in this code, it's easy enough to change some things about the image. Like we could just say image dot 
class list add and then just add all the classes that we want so like width 10 height 10 object cover and this really isn't so bad the only thing is it's not very friendly like if we want to reuse this code because we're always trying to force it with this one class but that's really fine like how many times are we really going to use this in our app let's just try to get something that works so this kind of works although it stacks it up in a row so what we can do is we can have a certain section in our form that we display the images and then we'll have some styling on that div so yeah i'm going to create a div i'm going to give it I'm going to turn it to a target, so I'll say data image upload target preview. All right, it's just going to be an empty div where we're going to preview the images, but then I'll add some styling, like I'll give it grid, grid called 4, gap 8. And then instead of doing this controller element, we'll do it on the this controller preview target. We also have to set that target up at the top. So just simply preview. Now let me select a few images. Boom, they just get added like that. We can select more. So kind of like this sort of look, which it's not bad, you know. But we don't really have any like if we want to add more code on it, like buttons that'll remove it like we definitely don't want to write that all from javascript that's where this sort of way of doing it just gets like it's simple but it's not good enough because as soon as we try to add more functionality it's just going to load up this function right here and it's going to be too much code and then all of this specific code for one page which we don't want to have that here so what i think we'll do is Let's definitely show a loader for the images, but then we can, once we're done like loading, we can replace them from the back end. That's how I usually do it. So what I would do is, let's just get started with doing that from the back end. So right here, instead of doing all this preview code on the front end, I'll just post our server. I'll post, I'll send a message to the server with the blob signed ID the blob signed ID is all is the only thing we need because we already have the blob stored in the back end we have it in a database table so we just need to send a message to the server then the server can look up the blob and it can render a template for that blob okay so to start adding some of these things the first thing I'm going to do is create that route so we're going to need a new route and controller action for the file uploads. We could create a new controller or we could just do it on the listings controller. At this point, it's probably better to just create a new controller. So what I'll do is I'll put a resource file uploads only create scope or no not scope module listings so what this means it's going to expect a file uploads controller inside of a listings namespace so to do that we have to go over over to the app controllers folder then create a new folder called listings and inside of here we'll create a file called file uploads controller the RB. And then if you want the module listings and a class file upload controller, we're gonna inherit from application controller. And then we'll add a create action. Perfect. And then inside of here is where we're gonna handle first finding the file. So the file is gonna come from active storage blog.find signs. And then we'll pass in the blob signed ID. And then now that you have this, like the file, we could easily display it in so, some sort of template, right? 
and then we could render it on the page. So what I'll also do is uh, inside of this preview, we can give it an ID, image previews. We could kind of use that to target from the file uploads controller. Uh, but let's not, let's just make sure that this is all working first. What I want to do is I want to pass the URL into our CMS controller. And I could do that by using a data attribute. So we can have data image upload URL value. And then we have to give it that, that route or that route to inside of here for the listing. So actually one thing about this is since we're using resources, it's going to expect that this nested resource has an ID of the parent listing. We actually don't want that. So to fix that, I'm actually just going to do a namespace listings. And then we don't need the module listings either. Uh, that way we don't need to have the listings ID passed in. And then to verify all of this, we can go into the console and do a rail routes which will display all the routes, and then we can look for that specific route that we just created. So down here, listings file upload path, you'll see that no ID is required anymore. There shouldn't, we shouldn't require an ID. All right, so then I'll go back to the form, and I'll set this listings file uploads path as this value. Then let's go into the stimulus. I'm gonna add a section up at the top static values and then we're going to have this URL string so that's what we called it and then way down here in the upload file function after we get like the file was uploaded we're going to make a post to that URL say post this dot controller dot URL value and for the parameters we're going to have just body and then we'll pass blob signed ID, which is going to come from the blob dot signed ID, just like this. Now, since we're going to use async await, we have to say await post, and we also have to mark this function as async. I do see problem here. Oh, because we need to add request.js for post. So that's another library, just like all the other Rails libraries. Uh, to add this, we can do dot slash bin slash import map pin at rel slash request.js. Just like that, we got request.js. And then up here at the top of the file, we can import the method that we're using, which is going to be post from rails request.js. Just like that. And oh, I'm actually still seeing add async modifier to containing function. Oh, I guess it's not this upload file, it's actually like this arrow function in here. This looks kind of weird, but hey, it's get it, it got it to stop. So I guess we just put async like that. And then we're going to await this post. Let's see what this does. <laughs> I'm kind of interested. Maybe I should have the network tab open so we can see all of our requests that get fired. So when we click this, oh, we have two requests. So we have one for direct upload. We actually have three. Then we have another one for the actual like direct upload complete or something when it stores the file. And then we have a third one, which is going to our custom route file uploads controller. This is pretty cool. And then inside of here, we would have the file. So what we want to do is just like render it into the form. And since we're using Turbo and everything, what we could do is we can have a matching Turbo Stream template. So to do that, we can go into the Views folder in the listings. Let's create another folder called File Uploads. So this will line up with uh, like the correct template because Rails will automatically look for a matching template for this name. So if we create that file inside of the right spot, which would be in the listings folder file uploads, we have the file called create.turbostream.erb. 
it's going to render this as a turbo stream. And inside of here, we could do something like turbo stream append. Because we want to append it to that image previews div. Pass it a block. And then, if you remember, we do have the app file, that blob. So I'm pretty sure it's as easy as just saying image tag app file. And then any CSS that we want to add to, like, as far as classes, if we want to do the, the height 20 object cover thing, we could do that. And let's just reload and see what happens. So, should we be getting a bad response from the server now? So to take a look at what's happening, we can just open up our Rails logs and it should show us what's going on. So it's saying, the create is missing a template for the request format and variant. Oh, yeah, so actually, I guess it's expecting, since we are doing a template now, it's thinking that we should have an HTML one, just the way that things are set up right now. You might want to do like respond to new format, format.turbostream, and just pass an empty block. Let's see if that fixes things. Still no. We're just getting like not acceptable inside the console it says unknown format. All right, so the reason being is actually from our stimulus and the request.js. I guess what's happening is it's thinking it should return HTML or whatever, and it's not doing it. So what we have to do is we have to set the response kind attribute. We have to set it to turbo dash stream. So now it's going to expect a turbo stream as a response. Now when we go, we do it. Boom. Look, it actually popped up right there. And we could add more. You know what? This looks pretty good to me. The only thing is there is kind of a lot of space. So I was thinking maybe instead of grid, we could change it to flex. So if you go back to the form partial, where we have this preview section, we had we were using grid. We might just want to do flex and flex wrap so that if it does fill up the space, it will wrap around. And it will leave the gap too. And then what you see is it looks more like this, a little bit more pretty. Yeah, just like that, we have image previews in the app. Now, one thing I also want to change is the text on this. I don't want this to maintain like the three files text. But I think to do that, in the JS, we actually have to clear out the file field after we upload. So like right here, we're looping through. We actually want to, when we're done with this, we want to like clear out the files. So remove files from input JS, things like that. It looks like, oh, we set the value to zero. So I think that's what we want to do. Just simply, E target value is nothing. So empty string. Let's take a look at what happens. We upload, but then the text doesn't change, which I think that's fine. Although the no file chosen text is kind of weird. So also let's make sure that everything is kind of like tied in here. Because I think right now it's not a hundred percent. So for one thing, I mean like these images aren't gonna save. Let's go ahead and create a sample house. So I'm gonna go to Airbnb and just get some information to use. Malibu dream house. This is interesting. This is no way this is a real place. That looks crazy. All right, and then. Go with some maps. Whoops. I just need a, an address. Simple test address. Santa Monica. Pop it in. I'm gonna grab this. <laughs> These images are crazy though, I don't know. I think it actually looks like that too. That's kind of gross. <laughs> I'm a Barbie girl. No, this is pretty gross. 
The funny thing is I'm doing all this work and then it's not even going to save because we don't have the saving set up yet, but that's fine. So when we go and select those new images, boom, they do show up as previews. And then we'll just set like the, all the other information, create listing. Now what happens is the images didn't save. They just didn't get sent. Since we cleared out the input, we are showing them, but we're not saving them. And the reason being is we just don't have them sent in the request. We don't have them in the form. So we need to have a hidden field, basically. Hidden field tag inside of here would be the name of it, which would be, it would need to match up to the request. So if you look at the request, let me scroll down here. The actual request to like create the record. Maybe right here. Oh, right here, parameters. See, so we're posting to listings, which means this is where we're creating the listing. We have all of this stuff. So the main thing is we have a key at listing, and then inside of it, we have all these parameters. And right here, we have images set to empty array. So it's not coming through. We need to set that images inside a listing. So that's what the name of it would be. It would be listing images like this. And then also square brackets means it's an array. So there could be multiple of them. And I guess the value would be the file dot or size ID like that. And I think that should fix our problem. So it'll actually save the images. We update listings. Uh, we got mismatch digest. To make sure everything's good, let's look inside of here. Images. Oh, look, it's actually trying to pass in value. So maybe we don't need the value part. Let's delete that. So just hidden field tag, name, value. Let's try that again. Select our images update listing and oh we only got one of them so that, that must have been an issue with this maybe that's not how we're supposed to do it listing images maybe we should put like a random id in here i've seen that before we'll put like super random x6 Something like that. Select the images, update listing. Oh, now it just didn't even work. The routing error. Invalid or incomplete post params, basically. So it didn't like my parameters. It's funny because I've done this before. I just need to figure it out. Even if we look in the documentation, I think they had a section on this. So it's like creating a hidden field, value blob side ID, hidden field names input dot name. So that is the thing. We need to have the same name as this image is. So what is this name? If I inspect it, it looks like the name is listing images square bracket, right? So that should be fine. But I thought we just had we just had this and it wasn't it only uploaded the first one. So let me quickly go and consult in my own code in my other app because I do have a similar thing like this. Look for underscore audio fields. Let's see where the hidden field is. File uploads audio file. Right, so inside of here, we do have the hidden field tag. Oh, but it wasn't even a multiple situation. Looks like I haven't covered that yet. All right, maybe this will work with the square brackets. Who knows? Let's try it again. Update listing. No, it's only getting like one of the images. So let's take a look at the HTML when we do this. 
inspect here. Oh, oh, weird. <laughs> Look at that, we get multiple images, but we only get one input with the hidden fields. This is pretty weird. Listing image. Why are we only getting one of them? I'm not sure, but let's try to wrap these in a div just to be sure. And then take a look at what happens. Let's inspect. Okay, now we have a div wrapping each one, and we have multiple hidden fields, so I think maybe this will work. Update listing, hey, and just like that, it is working. So I guess it's important for some reason to wrap these in a div because the hidden field is getting lost somehow. I'm not sure how, but something, in, something along the way in the process was breaking, hiding the hidden fields. Or like removing it really all right cool so now when I go back to edit listing we can actually see that the images like we can't tell that we have four images already and we can't, can't append to them either because if we upload more images they'll just replace the old ones so to fix that we actually would need to display this preview so what I'll do is I'll move this into a partial so let's just create a new partial inside of this file uploads folder I'll call it underscore image dot html that you're gonna be and then inside of the image it's just what we have here and instead of file at file because that's looking for a instance variable let's just pass an image and then what we can do is inside of this template we'll just render image and an image is gonna be at file just like that pretty clean and simple then inside the form inside of this preview what we'll do is we'll say we'll loop over the listing.images each do image Oops. and then we'll render listing slash file upload slash image and it's important to specify the whole path because we're inside of a different scope see we're not inside the file uploads controller anymore we're inside the listings controller so you want to specify the full path to the partial and pass an image as image actually I think I don't know if this is coming back as a blob or not we might have to say image dot blob it's coming back as an attachment, I think. And then we have to say blob to have the same like expected code. Let's go ahead and reload. And just like that, we'll see these are our current images. If we update the listings, they're still there. This is perfect. Now, if we wanted to add like a remove button, it's actually super easy since we have this organized into this nice little cute partial. Adding a remove button would just be as simple as adding like a link to and we'll use that font awesome icons since we have those in our app. I love font awesome because it's just super easy. So if I search up X, it's as simple as a little X mark. Plop that in and then we might want to make it red too. So it's like, you know, you're removing the image. So already this looks like not bad. And then if we want to position it on top of the images, let's add a class of relative to this div. And then on our link, actually, we'll add a class. Uh, so I think, okay, that should be fine. We'll just say absolute top zero, right zero. Reload. And now we have the red X button on top of the image. Although it is kind of hard to see. So we might want to add a BB 
three seven hundred or some sort of background just to just okay that's probably fine let's do px2 pvi1 there's a little bit of that might be a little bit too much let's do rounded full so that's all the way around okay i mean it's not terrible it's a little bit large though but we can actually do like text small which should make it a little bit smaller Maybe instead of a dark gray, we could go with a light gray. All right, I mean, that's not terrible, although I wish it was more properly rounded. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, PX3 seemed to do it like rounded, but <laughs> it's just like so large. It's a little bit too large. I don't know if I want to have all of this padding and making it to a fat button. I don't really know what the best UI for this is, but one thing is we can make it stick off of the side. So instead of doing zero, we can do like top two, right four. We should position it a little bit more. Maybe top one, right three. Even right two. I know this is a lot of fine tuning. But now we have like the X button, but I can hardly see it. That's the only problem. So if I do add a background, at least there's like a little bit of space. Maybe I'll just do P 0 0.5. So there's like just a tiny bit of padding. PX 0 0.5. Around it full. Maybe PX1. Something like that, but I still want to have it more like in the top right corner. So maybe actually we'll do top zero, right zero again. We can actually do negative to make it kind of like slide on the outside of the box. See, so now it's like at the top right corner. Actually, I like this a lot more. Uh, one thing is I want to add some space between the file field and the display. So to do that, let's go back in the form. And let's just add a BR on top of our preview div. All right, and then already this looks this looks pretty good to me. We can add new images, and then right away it's just like looking good, looking clean. We have all these images. We have this nice preview setup. But when we click the button... Well, nothing's happening. We have to add in the code for that. And to do that, it's actually pretty simple. Inside of this image partial, we just need this button to remove this element when we click on it. We can honestly create a whole stimulus controller for this. Let's do a data controller. Dismiss. Or we could call it like uh, well, there's a few ways I've done this. So we could have a whole like dismissible controller, or we can make a util controller, which is like our our quick JavaScript. We could have like a bunch of functions on our utils controller, and then we can reuse them all over the app. That's another thing that I've done in the past. So to do that, we would just go and create the stimulus controller. So in the console. Run Rails G Stimulus Utils. Right, now we have a new Utils controller. Utils, by the way, is short for utility. It just I've seen this used before. And then we could have like remove parent. It basically just removes. How about we, let's just say like remove. All right, all this is gonna do is just say this dot element. Remove. We have the data controller, and then on this link, we'd have that data action. Data action, utils, remove. And then it's really as simple as that. So I like using utils because then we can reuse it all over our app. 
if I reload, click on one of these. Actually, it's... Oh, we need to prevent the default for the link. That's one thing to note. So we have to pass the parameter in. And then just do prevent default. Reload. And now we can delete the images that we don't want. Oops, I can't really see the bottom of the page. Now we can go update listing. And you'll see that it actually works. This is awesome. So just like that, we have a clean front end file select feature for our app. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was kind of a bit of a longer one just because I was getting used to direct to upload. I had to do a contribution. But just like this, we have a better file select for our form. Now, one thing is I can't scroll down, I guess. So let me try to add some padding on the bottom of the page. That's pretty annoying. So on the edit page, we can do padding bottom 20. So we have a little bit of you know, way room. Even on the new, there's not very much padding, so I can add some. Padding bottom 20, now I can zoom down. And yeah, let's say we're gonna create a new listing now. Just let's end the video off with this. So I think I wanna do Austin. Let's go and find a nice house in Austin. Home in Dripping Springs. And then we're gonna create this house. Let's go find a example address. <clears throat> Obviously this isn't the real house. I'm just going to use it for my example. Get the description. And then let's also get some images. And I'm just going to show you how useful this feature is going to be already. So like, let's go and select the images. Let's just select all the images for the day. And then you'll notice like some of these, these aren't right. So I'm going to X out. And now we just have the ones that we want right here. And then we can add the amount of bedrooms, bathrooms, and the people limit. Well, I don't like how the people limit is uh, you can see how it's like going on a new line. So it's kind of messing up the form but anyways the rest of this works really well short listing so this all looks good although <laughs> this is weird now that images are getting messed up. i think that might be because didn't i set with auto on the show page yeah in this image tag we have with auto actually i want to do with full not with auto this looks better, although it still looks kind of stretched. Oh, so let's make sure that we have the object cover class so that it doesn't get stretched. And let's also add it to the main, like the large image. Oh, it's wrong place, right here. <laughs> On this image tag. Boom. All right, this is pretty good. Ooh, maybe I'll add some padding on this show page too. I don't like how there's no padding. Actually, instead of adding the padding here, let's just delete it from the new and the edit. Let's just add it in the application layouts. So we go over to layouts application file. Inside of here, we have this main container with the margin top. I think we might as well do like, let's just do padding bottom 28. We have a little bit of space to scroll to. All right, this looks pretty good. This thing. We can clean this up, the people limit, because this is like, I hate how it's uh, overflowing. So let's go to the form, scroll down, and let's see how we can make this better. People limit. <clears throat> Even people limit is kind of like weird. You could say capacity. Mm, no, it's not really better. You 
know what, we could just delete that, this message entirely because it's kind of messing up the form. Bedrooms, bathrooms, people limit. Hmm. And if we wanted to think, rethink that design to make it a little bit better and still have a side message, we could do that, but I just want it to look right. I'm pretty happy with what we got done today. Because now we have this better setup. We can preview the images. We can remove the ones we don't like. And just like this, it's pretty nice.